But here's the, the thing I want to know is, have you ever worried about anything? Anyone? No? What? Yeah. Oh, yes, I hit both hands in the back. Yes, we, we worry. What are some things people worry about? You don't have to give me your specifics, but you can, anybody. Money. Money? People worry about money. Work. Work. Yeah. Health. Kids. Kids. What do you worry about, Emer? She looked up at me right when I said that. That's right. We worry about you. Yeah, there's lots of things that people can worry about. So it's a little interesting here that Jesus is spending so much time in this passage telling us not to worry. But he's actually saying not to worry about a few specific things. What were some of the things Jesus brought up? Don't worry about your clothing, your food, drink. your drink. Kind of like basic essentials in life. Don't those kind of sound like things that we should kind of worry about a little? So I think one thing that when I was looking through all this and reading some commentaries is that Jesus is making these specific worries, these specific topics, because when you worry about something, it, it can also mean that you are not rather prepared for certain things. See how I did that? Scout Sunday, be prepared. Thank you, thank you. But I think that's the part of this is, is that if you're worried about something, perhaps it means that you have not necessarily prepared enough for those things. And then if you are prepared for those things, say, say you have enough food, say you, you have enough clothing, but yet you worry beyond your means. So there's two different sides of this. There is that worry that we might not have enough of scarcity and then there's the worry is, if we have enough, oh no, perhaps we need more. So I have a feeling that people weren't necessarily walking around with Jesus here completely naked without any clothing. I have a feeling that was not the case. So what's the worry about that? Why do we worry? That's actually, that one stuck out the most to me was, don't worry about what, what you're going to wear. Because who does not wake up in the morning and think, what am I going to wear today? My husband's in the military. I don't know if any of you have jobs where you wear uniforms, but I envy all of you who wear uniforms because you don't have to think about that, right? You wake up in the morning, you're like, hmm, what am I going to wear today? Uh, I think I'll wear my camo gear today. Yeah. yeah, he wears the same thing every day. That's fantastic. So that's a worry gone, right? No, but you still got to be prepared, right? You still have to buy that clothing. You still have to have a job in order to get the money to buy that clothing. There are all these little worries, these little things that can eat at us and that can pull us further from our relationship with God, that have us crying out for more. So what happens when those worries go away? happens when we decide that we don't have to have the best of the best, that the food that we have is enough, that we have enough that will sustain our thirst, that peace, that peace that comes from knowing that God will be there for us. I mean, maybe Jesus isn't even really talking specifically about clothes or about food. Because in the end of the passage, Jesus says, seek first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't feel like seeking God's kingdom is actually going to give me a little credit card to go to the store to buy more clothes. I don't think it really works that way. If it does, please let me know. I would like to know that. So if God's kingdom isn't going to give us more stuff, what does it mean? What does that mean to seek God's kingdom? And I think we can go back to the being prepared. If we are seeking God's... Let's, let's take our church, for example. So we definitely try to seek God's kingdom in our church. 
That's one of the things we really try to do. And I'm going to bring this up, and it's not because I want everybody to stay after to pack bags for the food pantry. But today we're packing bags for the food pantry in between services. That is one way that we are living out this kingdom of God, right? We're fulfilling God's kingdom by providing things for other people. We are looking at our abundance, and we're saying, you know what? What can we do with our abundance? All right, well, let's have somebody, who was it? Karen Carlson, however, 20 years ago said, let's have a food pantry. So we opened this food pantry up, and it has been going for so long that we have been feeding thousands of people by seeking the kingdom of God. So you've got, you've got people coming from abundance, but you also have people who are trusting God and seeking God's kingdom when they are worried about not having any food. So we're on both sides of this. If you need a bag of food, where can you go? You don't have to despair. You don't have to worry. You can come here. And that's part of seeking God's kingdom as well. Knowing that when your worry can be fulfilled, having those resources. And here at this congregation, we provide those resources. We help people with those things. There's help out there. And seeking God's kingdom sometimes is seeking that help and looking for others to stand beside you. So a few other things that we talked about um, worrying about. Uh, Somebody mentioned worrying about our health or worrying about um, our kids or our children. You know, there are things we can't control. And we can worry about those things. Or we can pray about those things too and and admit in our hearts when those worries come up. And sometimes just even saying out loud, I'm really concerned about the future. Recognizing it. Giving that up in prayer to God. Sometimes that small seeking can mean big things in our lives. Because once you realize your worries or recognize these things that you're worried about and share them with somebody else, then you actually are getting that kingdom of God together. And now those worries are something that everybody can work toward to have it be no longer a worry. Now, this can be difficult sometimes. It can be difficult to be vulnerable and to admit when we're worried about things. So we have lots of ways in order to reach out. You could fill out a prayer card in the pew in front of you and share those worries with your pastoral staff. You could write that on a prayer card and tuck it in your Bible and know that someday you'll share that with someone else. You could call a friend you haven't seen in a while. You could just talk to someone about what's weighing on you. Because seeking the kingdom of God is not something that you do by yourself. It's something that we do as a community. So today, what I'd like to do, I'm going to close my sermon out, but I'm going to go back. Because the prayer of the day today really sums up all of these things together. So if you could go back to page... Actually, I don't know what page this is. Six, seven. Page seven in your bulletin. What I'd like to do to close this out is I would like us to all say the prayer of the day together. If you want to say it out loud, you can say it out loud. If you want to say it silently, say it silently. But I hope this encourages you in any of your worries to reach out, whether it's to God or to your neighbor or to your family, that all of those worries may be come together, be lifted up, and then be diminished. So let us pray. God of tender care.